Hi, for this video, what I want to do is just kind of a conceptual video um, of what an interval estimate for the mean is, and also kind of show you what things influence the size of the interval. Okay, so typically in the real world, when we are studying a certain characteristic of a population, we are unable to study the entire population. So what we often do is we find the sample mean um, as an approximation or a point estimate of the population mean. So let's say, for example, that we're studying um, dolphins that live in the ocean and we're studying a characteristics. Let's just say that we're trying to study um, what is the average weight of a dolphin. Okay, it's unrealistic to think that we could capture every single dolphin that lives in the ocean. And so a lot of times what we will do is we'll study some of those dolphins and it doesn't have to be their weight. It could be any characteristic that you're studying. So if you're trying to figure out what is the population mean weight, of those dolphins that live in the ocean, we could capture, say, 30 dolphins and find their weights and then use that as a point estimate. Well, most of the time, um, our samples of the same size that we select from that population are gonna have different point estimates. So every time that we pull a different sample of dolphins, we could come up with a different point estimate. And then these point estimates will be different from the actual population mean. So we know that there's going to be a difference. Um, so a lot of times what we will do is we will use an interval estimate, which is another name for a confidence interval. So um, confidence intervals and interval estimates are both the same thing. The interval estimate is found by starting with your point estimate. After you have found your point estimate, we are going to both add and subtract the margin of error. So this will give us a range of values. And we hope that our interval estimate actually contains the true population mean. Sometimes we could have dealt with a, um, an unusual sample and we could have missed the mean entirely. Okay. Um, so we use the margin of error to get the endpoints of the interval estimate. Again, I'm not doing any calculations in this one because different formulas will use different, um, so we use different formulas for different types of confidence intervals or interval estimates. So for this one, I just kind of wanted a brief overview of everything that we do. Okay, so there are two things that will impact your size of your interval estimate, and those are the level of confidence and the sample size. So the level of confidence is telling us uh, approximately how many of our interval estimates will actually contain the true population mean. So if I'm running a 95% confidence interval, that means that 95% of the samples that I pull from that population will actually contain the true population mean in my interval estimate. Okay, that means that 5% of them will not. Okay, so the level of confidence is telling us approximately how many of the samples that we take from that population will contain that actual mean. The other thing that influences um, your interval estimate is the sample size. So this is how they influence them. The higher your level of confidence is, the wider your interval is going to be. The smaller the level of confidence is, the narrow the interval will be. The smaller your sample size, the wider the interval is, and the larger your sample size, the narrower the interval is. So I just wanted to take a second to show you in a simulation. Okay, so what we have here is we are just pulling from a population that has a mean of 52.3 and a standard deviation of 3.7. I'm gonna start with a sample size of 30, and I'm gonna generate 100 intervals. Um, I'm going to use 95% level of confidence to start with because that is the default go-to. So uh, this is the most commonly used confidence interval is 95%. So when I sample, you can see that there's a bunch of green lines that show up on here. Each of these green lines gives me a different inter interval estimate. So you can see that this interval estimate goes from 51.885 to 54.533. And because it is green, that means that this population mean is actually contained in this interval. At the center, you have a dot, that center, um, that dot in the middle, that is your point estimate. So for this one, the mean happened to be 53.209 for this sample. And then we used um, the margin of error, we subtracted to get one endpoint and we added to get the other endpoint. Okay, if you notice down here, this one is red. And the reason it's red is because it only goes from 48.902 
um, up to 51.550. And so 52.3 was completely missed in this one. So that's what I was talking about is sometimes you will get unusual samples. Um, right now there's a 98%. So if I were to sample again, um, over time, like this one, notice we only got 93%, but our running total is 95.5%. So over time, as we sample from this population, 95% of them will um, contain the actual mean. So now let me show you what happens if I change this level of confidence. So if I go down to 80% and I recalculate, notice that my interval got a lot smaller and I have a lot more red ones. Okay, the red ones are telling us that we had a lot more samples that did not contain um, the actual mean, and so it's giving us a narrower interval. If I move it up to 99% confidence, um, notice that the interval does get wider, and so the level of confidence will change the width. The other thing that will change it is our sample size. So if I just go back to our default 95% and recalculate, okay, um, if I change my sample size, so 30 is kind of like the starting point, um, if I change it to 50, um, and I sample from here, notice that I still got 97% of them contained it, but my interval actually got a lot um, smaller. Okay, so uh, as I change my sample size, as it increases, it will change um, the width of the interval, but I still run about the same 95% approximately. Okay, so the most accurate thing to do if you want to have a smaller interval but not miss a lot of them is to increase your sample size. The larger your sample size is, um, the less likely that uh, your, or sorry, the, the standard deviation or how much each of your sample means differs from the population mean is gonna be a lot smaller. So the larger your sample size is, the smaller the interval is. Okay, like I said, for this one, all I wanted to do was talk about concepts here. I will do other videos that show you how to actually calculate them, and I do have quite a few of them that show you how to create different types of confidence intervals, but understanding why we use interval estimates is also important. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.